What's going on guys, my name is Matt. Um, I've been in medical device sales for probably around three years now, probably a little bit over. Um, I did want to you know, put out information for you to either try and help you gain a position in medical device sales or you know, increase your growth numbers in your current medical device sales position. Um, so that is what we are going to be doing in these videos that I put out. Um, in this video today, I wanted to give you five options that you can do to increase your chances of becoming a medical sales rep. Um, so without further ado, I did wanna get started with number one. So number one, you have probably heard before, um, but this is network like crazy. And there is a specific way to network um, that I go over with you if you decide to take me on as uh, you know your medical sales coach to get you in the door. Um, however, you do have to do it tactfully. You have to have the right approach to networking with people and you have to do it in a matter of, you know, a manner of how much volume versus what you're actually getting out. So you have to do the right amount of hits on networking with people. You have to approach it in the correct way in order for it to pay off. However, um, networking, especially if you have zero experience, is going to be one of the easiest ways and probably the best way to break into medical device sales if you are a complete newbie. Using sites like LinkedIn, uh, MedReps, Cafe Pharma, all of those are great. Uh, MedReps and Cafe Pharma will be job applications and postings, and LinkedIn will be a place where you can network with other people such as yourself. Um, that are either looking for jobs or we can network with people that are already in job positions that you would like to get. Now, while you're going around this whole entire process, what I did is I would have an Excel spreadsheet um, and then I would start marking everything, um, everything that I did, every single call iteration that I had, every single phone number that I got from somebody. Um, I would do all of these um, just so I would be organized. And then I would also set a reminder in my phone in a week to follow up with people, uh, depending on the intervals that you should be following up with them. So, you know, normal people I'd follow up in about a week. Um, if there were people I needed to follow up sooner, I would plan accordingly. So just using sort of, uh, you know, software to help you out is going to be big in keeping yourself organized because you're going to be applying and networking with a lot of people if you do it right. So number two is going to be reaching out to the correct people. So these are the people that you should be reaching out to. They are going to be area sales managers, hiring managers, um, recruiters you can use. Um, you know, if you've been in med sales for a little bit, recruiters can be a very valuable tool to help place you. Um, regional sales directors and territory managers. Those are gonna be people that are actively in roles that can help you get a role, uh, reach out to them. And a lot of people, at least in my experience, do not like when you just ask for a job or sort of a gimme or a handout, um, but they will respect you if you do something for them and really show that you care, that is selfless and goes out of your way for them. So here's one more thing that I see time and time again. Um, a bunch of people come to me and they say, you know, they're ready to start applying. Um, but then I go to their LinkedIn and it's a picture of them in an unprofessional setting. They don't have their LinkedIn dialed up at all. And then they have the LinkedIn uh, open to work sign that is on there. Um, I will tell you just a little free tip. The open to work sign has had a lot of negative correlation recently with actually getting jobs. Um, it does show that, you know, it is seen as a sign of desperation, whether that is true or not, but employers do think that, so I'm just letting you know. Um, so make sure that your LinkedIn is um, completely tuned up, uh, buttoned up, and you are good to go in that regard. So number four is that you should get coaching for interviews. So when you finally get to the point where you're going through a medical sales interview, it's extremely competitive. So you don't want to waste that potential job or that job that could have gotten away. Um, what I would do is I would hire a coach. Um, I obviously do this, but there are people much like myself that have been through it and can guide you for it. Um, you know, athletes use coaches. Everybody uses coaches to help them improve when they know that there is someone that's better than them, that's been doing it for a longer time, that can provide them insight that could be invaluable. Because when you think about it like this, if you're gonna pay someone, let's just say even $1,000 and you can get a job that makes you over $100,000, that is a giant return on your investment. The Probably the, mo the biggest investment that you can get with that money really, because you might not have gotten it anywhere else. So that's just something to consider because the interview processes are long, they are lengthy, um, they are filled with things that you might not expect had you not hired one. And the last thing that you could do is uh, get involved with me as your coach. Um, I do these for uh, you know relatively cheap in comparison to some of the other programs that are out there. 
Um, I would love to work with you, um, tailor a game plan specifically to you and help you reach your goals. Um, so if you wanted to do that, you could go ahead and book a 30 minute free Zoom Calendly. Uh, the Calendly invite is going to be down there below. Um, I'd love to hear from you and then see if I could help you out in any way, shape or form. Um, but hopefully that video helped you. Uh, hopefully you had some reasonable takeaways of how to become a medical sales rep in 2024. Um, and would definitely love to hear from you. So thanks.